Hello, my name is Camden Rowell, and my TED Talk will be over, Is Humanity Naturally Good or Evil? For thousands of years, the human race has fought an ongoing battle between the forces of good and evil. Whether it be holding the door for an elderly woman, or intentionally making a mess for the janitor to clean up, everyone here has experienced the ominous presence of these concepts. Even the most pure and corrupt individuals in our everyday society have carried out their contradicting tasks unknowingly. The reason why I want to talk about this topic today is that the forces of good and evil can have differing effects on everyone. While someone may be left feeling like they committed a great act, they can leave another feeling miserable and terrible about themselves with the idea that the other is evil. This just showcases how good and evil can completely contradict one another while playing a pivotal role in our everyday society. So this begs the question, are we naturally good or evil when it comes to our actions in life? Now, over time, this question has been repeatedly brought up, which has sparked a compelling debate on whether we as humans are inherently good or evil. The argument originally started in 1651, when English philosopher Thomas Hobbes stated that humanity is solitary, poor, nasty, brutish, and short. But a century later, another philosopher by the name of Jean-Jacques Rousseau um, contradicted Hobbes' theory by stating that humans are naturally pure and conformed into egotistical and selfish beings through the influence of society and the course of modernization. Now, taking a more in-depth dive into this disagreement, many will infer their own separate opinions over the course of individual behavior. Some will infer that we are generally foul, while others will conclude that we are ethical when it comes to our actions. However, there is truly no definitive answer when it comes to human nature. In civilization, there are always be the goods and the bads that counter each other. This proves true in a social experiment conducted by Stanley Milgram over the course of obedience in 1963. In this test, a teacher um, would shock a participant every time they messed up on carrying out their respective orders. The purpose of this test was to see inside the minds of various teachers um, whether they would stop shocking the participant based on morals or if they would continue to harm the participant until a task was finished based on obedience. Perfectly enough, only 12.5% of the participants would disobey their orders and quit after the 20th shock, while around 65% would continue to the end of the experiment. Personally, I believe this research showcases that we as humans are incredibly difficult to judge. Although a majority of the participants in the Milgram experiment followed through with their horrific actions, there was also a small body of participants that defied their commands. This test essentially embodies the infamous phrase, one bad apple ruins a bunch, as not everyone can be defined as evil based off the actions of one particular group. Now, another example of our society's nature is the concept of yin and yang. Now, if you aren't already familiar with this symbol, let me break it down for you. According to Wikipedia and Chinese philosophy, yin and yang is described as a concept of dualism, describing how seemingly opposite or contrary forces may actually be complementary and interdependent in the natural world. Essentially, this symbol showcases that two contradictory forces, such as good and evil, for example, um, are balanced and can't live without each other in our everyday society. Without positivity and virtue and and humanity, our world would eventually conform into dystopian civilization, such as the world in the book Fahrenheit 451. Within this book, a firefighter by the name of Guy Montag lives in a dark and gloomy society in which books are banned and replaced with visual entertainment. In this dystopia, there is practically no, no, there is essentially no individualism or enjoyment among the mass majority. However, our lives wouldn't be much better without the forces of evil. Now, many of you probably are thinking to yourselves right now, what am I talking about? Of course life would be better without evil. While our lives would have more benefit to the loss of negativity and sin, we would also still face the same issues as life without morality. As time would pass, our lives would become like those of the giver. Now, I'm sure that most of you remember reading this book at school a couple years ago. Nevertheless, the story follows the path of a young boy by the name of Jonas who lives in a utopian community. Within this story, um, or within this world, sorry, Um, Everyone is devoid of pain and suffering, but at the cost of emotional depth. Now, although it may seem nice to not have to deal with pain anymore, it is what makes us human. Um, Sometimes it can shape who we are through emotions, and without emotions, we would be these mindless creatures who cannot love or enjoy life. Ultimately, without the forces of good and evil balancing our universe, our society wouldn't be able to function how it's supposed to. 
Now, we know everyone in this world will have differing opinions on this debate, but in the end, it is essentially undefined. We as people cannot be defined by the majority, as no matter the circumstances and conditions, there will always be the good and evil forces in this world. However, if we can work hard enough on improving our lives and the lives of others every day, we can improve the world we live in and help push the fight against evil. Even a small compliment can go a long way in one's life, so love yourself and love others for who they are so that we can improve Earth and solve the answer to the long-tenured question of if we are fundamentally good or evil. Thank you.